I've powered up the old time machine again today, set the quality to brand new in box, set the date to 1985 and let's see what turns up. It's a dictaphone voice recorder that uses the unusual Pico cassette. The model number is 4250, it's called the Exec, but they only made one model that used the Pico cassette and this is it. That instruction booklet really screams 1985 to me and that's when this thing was manufactured. Let's get inside the box and have a look at the Exec recorder as well as the whole Pico cassette system. Now conveniently inside the box this does contain a Pico cassette as well as a nice little carrying case for the recorder itself. And the recorder, I think that might be magnesium alloy. It's a really nice, good quality metal piece of equipment, very solidly built. Now the cassette, the Pico cassette, it's a good job it had one in the box because they're very hard to get hold of. As you can see it's absolutely tiny. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea as to the performance of this thing, it is just for voice recording. If we look at the specs inside the manual, you can see that it runs at 0.9 centimeters a second. There's a few other bits of information in there as well, but it really is just a voice recorder, this one, albeit a very good one. Let's quickly compare the size of the Pico cassette with some other more common voice recorder formats. So there's the Philips mini cassette, and that's the Olympus micro cassette. As you can see, quite a bit smaller than both of those, especially when it comes to the thickness of the cassette. Okay, so enough about the cassette. Let's put it to one side and have a look at the recorder that it goes inside of. Right, this is the exec recorder. It's absolutely beautiful, as I mentioned before. Really nicely put together. You've got rubber buttons on the top there. You've got this sort of fake leather area at the bottom with a bit of texture on it. Volume control on the front there. I've got a speaker on the front and I'm not too sure, might be one on the back as well. You can see it's got this stamp on the bottom of it here to say what it is. Really well put together, you don't get things like this anymore. Microphone on the top there, not too sure what that little round hole is. But when you look at it you think, hold on a minute, where does anything go in here? I can't see anywhere to put the cassette. Well, that bit slides out first of all to hold the batteries. Now, it says the batteries in the manual give up to about eight hours of recording time. I've got two little Duracells here. As you can see, it's a bit of an unusual size, but you can get hold of these without too much difficulty. I'd imagine these Duracells might give even longer recording time than the eight hours quoted in the manual. Now, we've got it uh, on, as you can see. The screens come on there. Just press off to turn it off, which enables you to open the door on the back, and that's where the cassette goes in. So let's just put that little Pico cassette in there, and we'll have a play around with this and see how good the sound quality is. So just pop that in there, close the doors. You can see really nice mechanism all around there, nicely put together, really good quality. It should have been. This thing cost $400 approximately back in 1985, which was a considerable chunk of change. Now let's just try recording something. You've got to hold down the record button. This is a test recording testing the Dictaphone Pico cassette. Now to listen back to that, all you have to do is hold the rewind slash play button until the tape gets into the right position, let go and it'll start playing. This is a test recording testing the Dictaphone Pico cassette. So there's two record modes. If you're making personal recordings, hold down the record button whilst you speak. But you can also press the conference button if you want to go hands-free. OK, so we're in conference mode now. This is recording a meeting between a number of people discussing big hair. Shoulder pads, uh, probably moustaches, briefcases, uh, that kind of thing. Now, some people might not be aware how a dictaphone would fit in with normal office activities. Now, I was working in an office in the mid-80s, and this was the kind of computer that would be on my desk. I didn't have access to any word processing facilities. So if you wanted to write a letter to someone, you'd have to record it on your dictaphone. With regard to your letter earlier this month, I'd like to tell you that your policy is now cancelled and uh, we've taken all your money. Once you dictated your letter, you'd take the cassette out of the machine, you'd put it in a manila envelope along with some instructions as to who the letter was to come back to. That would then go off in the internal post. It would go to the typist department who would listen to your recording whilst using a transcriber machine. They'd type your letter up on their electric typewriters, 
put the letter back in the envelope along with the cassette. That would then come back to you in the internal post probably the next day, at which point you send the letter out and put the cassette back in your machine to reuse for future letters. So if you're looking for a reason as to why the Pico cassette never took off, well, there were two very well established competing formats on the market already in the mini cassette and the micro cassette. So if the Pico cassette comes along, not only do you have to buy your expensive handheld recorder, you'd also have to replace the transcriber machines that were in use in the typing department. And I can't see that happening in most offices. Now, whilst it appears that the Pico cassette wasn't a great commercial success, it doesn't mean that it isn't a very good device. It's very advanced for its time it's got some really interesting features let me show you one of them now you can put cue marks which are like beeps on the tape and then you can access those later on so you can have multiple letters say after one another and then jump to the particular letter that you want to listen to so let's show you that now we'll change that into letter mode on the LCD screen at the top and then you press the Q button, which inserts a beep into the recording, which you can then access whilst you're fast forwarding so let me just show you what happens when I do that now And of course, like most voice recorders, you can scrub through the recordings whilst listening to them to get to the exact point you need. Another nice feature is the ability to quick erase a cassette. Once you've got to the end of a side, holding down review slash play and Q will rewind over the cassette whilst erasing it at the same time. Now you may have noticed that I've been careful to describe the Pico cassette as the smallest analog cassette tape ever made. And that's because there is a smaller cassette but it's digital. I've already demonstrated it in a previous video and it's the Sony NT. Now the Sony NT is a digital tape and it will hold 120 minutes. It's pretty much the same thickness as the Pico cassette, but of course it's got considerably better sound quality. Now I have managed to find one more tiny analog cassette tape format and that's the Philips Ultra Mini. As you can see, quite a bit thicker than the Pico cassette and generally larger all round, but it's Philips attempt to shrink down their mini cassette. But as you can see, it can only hold 10 minutes per side. I've yet to find a machine that specifically uses these cassettes. However, you can use them inside a normal mini cassette deck with an adapter. They fit over the spools and the tape goes in the same place. But back to the Pico cassette. Yes, it really was the smallest analog cassette tape format ever made. However, it turns out that people were quite happy with the slightly larger mini and micro cassettes. And those are still on sale today, whereas the Pico cassette is largely forgotten about. So there you have it, the Pico cassette from Dictaphone. A beautiful example of the very best of mid-1980s technology at the cutting edge. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.